What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I am James Haskell, along with my co-host, Glenn Martin. And here and today, we are here to talk about a certain position here with Baltimore Ravens being the offensive tackle. Uh, we're going to be doing a series of videos on the position groups, evaluating what we have and what is there for us in both free agency and the draft to look ahead for the 2022 season. I think some of our answers will be to your surprise, others not so much. But before we get into this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, give us a like, turn your notifications, and make sure you leave your comments below on all of our opinions. We'd love to get yours as well. Uh, but Glenn, let's talk about the offensive tackle position for the Baltimore Ravens. Let's start with, of course, who we have under contract for next year. So what does that look like just as far as offensive tackles go? Yeah, so first and foremost, Big Ronnie, he'll be back out there on the left side um, and obviously being paid handsomely uh, to protect the blind spot. Uh, yeah, he might of, be one of the highest paid po podcast hosts. You yeah, know. not doesn't make a dime off his podcast. Um, <laughs> but he, does, he certainly gets paid – um, handsomely to play left tackle and protect Lamar's uh, blind side. But um, yeah, excited to get him back. Hopefully we get back a, you know, at least a familiar version of what Ronnie Stanley is and not a, uh, a lesser version, but any, first of all, any worry, uh, actually, you know what? I'll get, I'll circle back to him. Let me just finish who, okay. who's all there. So Ronnie Stanley <laughs> is expected to be back and healthy at left tackle. Um <sighs> Now, now, as far as backing him up right now, I'd predict Alejandro Villanueva as uh, a guy who's at least under contract currently um, through next sure. season. Although his sure. cap number, Day. yeah, his cap number jumps uh, in a significant way. It doubles, in fact, and they do have an opportunity to get rid of him if they so choose. But currently, right now, Alejandro Villanueva is also under contract and would not be a bad insurance policy if Ronnie's not ready. Uh, then you have right tackle right now is predicted to be Jawan James, who is, again, under contract next year. Missed all of this season as he rehabbed from an Achilles tear. He suffered in the offseason, uh, but certainly has had success in this league with his time in Denver. Um, and and so hopefully he gets back to, to playing at that type of level and the Ravens can benefit there. And then, of course, Patrick McCary was signed to an extension this season after he was forced into a role of playing right tackle that most I think would have been skeptical that he could have even been serviceable, but he was certainly more than serviceable at right tackle. Um, and, you know, I think played, played quite well, in fact, and he is now here and signed until uh, uh, through the 2024 season. So right now four four guys under contract, at ta at, you know, at the tackle position, but what's your thoughts on those, uh, those guys and the depth they have there? Yeah, honestly, if you compare it to a lot of other tackle rooms in the NFL, I'm not as down on it as I think a lot of Ravens fans might be. Ronnie Stanley at one time was a, was an all pro and we expect him. I fully expect him to be back close to, if not the same as what he was before uh, two surgeries in and a lot of time to rehab a lot of time to talk about Lord knows what with Marlon Humphrey and contemplate his ankle injury. A lot of time to get, you know, to get it, to get it, all to get PT and get it all right and good to go. Mm -hmm. So I expect Ronnie to be back and ready to rock. Same thing with Juwan James, a lot of time to rehab. Of course, that was a preseason injury. And, uh, and now he has, you know, last season or I mean the off season, then this season, and then, and then this upcoming off season. So I feel good about those two. Same thing with Patrick McCary, Patrick McCary. I'm very confident. You talked about an insurance policy. I think it's fair to say he he's probably an insurance policy for both. In fact, I think Alejandro Villanueva is gone because Patrick McCary has played a little bit of left tackle in a pinch. It obviously is more comfortable at right, but can do both. And so I don't think that you need two insurance policies uh, at, at this time, even though both guys are coming off injuries, but the chances of them both going down again for the season, I don't know how likely that is. Knock it on wood. All the wood I can find in the room. Um, so, and then I, I mean, you know, Tyree Phillips can't finish a game, but you know, he, he's somewhere worth mentioning. So, um, 
Yeah, I feel good about the room, to be honest with you, Glenn. I, I, I think in comparison to a lot of the Ravens fans I've talked to, I'm probably one of the most optimistic Ravens, fan you, Ravens fans you'll find about the tackle room. So that's where I'm at with, we are, with where we are today. What about you? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with all, uh, pretty much everything you said. I think that uh, Alejandro may prove to be, first of all, he might decide to hang it up. Yeah, uh, which is entirely possible, you know, at his age and and all the football he's played and the you know his endeavors that he has outside of football. So I I think he could just decide to hang it up. Uh, but even if not, I, I'd be I wouldn't be shocked to see the Ravens decide to to use that amount. Of, I mean, because his cap number isn't small. His cap number would be nine point two million for a guy who's not starting. I'd be very hard. It'd be hard for me to understand why they pay a guy nine point two million is just to be an insurance policy. So. I'd be, I'd be quite frankly a little surprised to see him still be here. Um, like you mentioned, Patrick McCarry is is a is an insurance policy for for both tackles and the rest of the offensive line because he can play anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so excellent signing there. And then Tyree Phillips is still under contract for another two seasons. So in a pinch, if you had to, you at least know you got a guy who has played some um, meaningful football at the tackle position, and you you could put him in there if you had to. So I feel good about those um, those three. Um, of course, Ronnie, I hope he comes back and plays the same, uh, and that would be excellent. But I want to na- name a couple guys who are out there. Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, in currently in free agency or who are expected to be out there in free agency, who the Ravens could look to replace um, some of their talent with. The first being Nate Solder, um, who you know was formerly of the New England Patriots and then of the, the, the New York Giants and signed a monster deal there. Had a lot of injuries himself and, and a guy who – you know, he's had success, but also had a lot of time in the training room. Cam Robinson's being another guy, Taron Armstead, um, Dwayne Brown, Trent Brown, Eric Fisher, Riley Reef, and Mose and Morgan Moses. And a lot of those guys are more depth pieces and possible yeah. swing tackles. And does any of those names get you excited and think maybe we could get rid of one of our guys and replace with one of those guys? One of our starters? No. I mean, I agree with you. I think they're depth guys, but it might be int- there's the the it's talking about bookends. The two guys that intrigue me the most are Morgan Moses and Nate Solder. Um, yeah. I think part of Nate Solder's problem was he was playing for a terrible franchise. Uh, and, and so you know we've seen him play well in the past, and maybe he got overpaid. But uh, I think there could be an opportunity for the, a team like the Ravens to find value value in him. Same thing with Morgan Moses. I know he's on the back end of it. I don't know his exact age. Uh, because I don't follow, uh, you know, the teams that he's played for as closely, but uh, certainly I, I like both of those names. Is there anyone else on there that that uh, you know draws your attention? I mean, there's a, I, I I guess there's some, but I just they don't make a ton of sense in in like Taron Armstead. Um, I think is a quality player. I think he's a good player, but what does he really do? Like you're gonna get rid of Ronnie? Like you're not gonna? So right. It's just certain guys don't make sense to bring in as just backups and and you know possible swing tackles. So none of these guys on the list scream to me um, a guy who'd be perfect for that role. I think honestly, I think what we have in in house is probably what we're going to go with at the tackle position. The question is, does that worry? You know, how, how much does that worry the fans and 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 really the coaches if you gave them some truth serum? I think I think the injuries. I don't know. What, let me ask you this: Who are you more confident in coming back and and not getting re injured between Juwan James and Ronnie Stanley? I'm confident that neither of them will get re injured. At least not Even the though same. Ronnie Stanley, not the had... same injury. Yeah, I, uh-huh. I think. Look, if Dak Prescott, if Alex Smith, if let's go go down the list of gruesome ankle injuries. If those guys can come back, Alex Smith almost lost his dag on leg. Yep. And and he was playing quarterback. And I understand he's not 300 and some odd pounds and, and all these other things. Like if any of you are doctors and want to dispute this with me, that's fine. But don't dispute it with me if you're not. Uh, right. Because you have a, a degree. Yeah. I mean, so my point is that I, I feel good that Ronnie's going to come back. I feel good that Juwan James has had ample time to recover. So I'm not concerned about a re-injury here, at least not in the same, like I'm not, like another Achilles or another ankle. Now something else could happen, but I just, I, I got a good feeling about both of these guys. I think the Ravens were abundantly cautious, did the right thing. And I think they both had tons of time. They weren't late season injuries, mid season injuries, none of that. Right. Um, so yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, he, the the part that would, I mean, I don't know. The, the part that concerns me is if you just look over the the history of Ronnie Stanley's career. Yeah. He, you know, he played 12 games in 2016, 15 games in 17 and 18. He played in 14 games in 2019, and then six games in 2020 and just one game last year. So the trend isn't isn't pointing in the right direction. Now, I, I, I'm optimistic as well, but. Would you be stunned if Ronnie Stanley was down in week five and, and then we're back to the same position where we're filling in? I mean, but, no, but, it, but maybe not for a season ender. OK. And I, so I guess the, the whole thing is, what really could you do anyway? You know, say say you right. are you are worried. There's not a whole lot you can do because you done gave the guy a whole bunch of money and and you can't get away from that contract. So um, you kind of got to make the best of it and hope that he doesn't get injured again because next year as bad as it was having him on the bench this year his cap was 10 million this year Jimbo it's 18 and a half next year and it only goes up every year after that so man let's just hope that he's back on the field because they, I, I just don't see any way of getting away from him I mean he's he is who he is and 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 we're kind of stuck with him but what are your thoughts on the fact that a lot of fans are thinking they should take one of the tackles expected to be a first round pick. And some of those guys, just so so you know, and again, we're going to get into a lot more depth when it comes to drafts, uh, you know, the draft later on in this offseason. But right now, the expected and projected first round tackles are Evan Neal, Akeem Aquanu, I probably said that wrong, C mm -hmm. Charles Cross, Kenyon Green, Nicholas Petit Ferrer, and Trevor Penning. Um, and I probably butchered two of those names. But what are your thoughts on the Ravens possibly addressing the tackle position and depth there by using the first round pick on it? Yeah, I don't honestly don't see that happening, Glenn. I know a lot of people ha do see it happening and 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 are in favor of it, but I think the Ravens go mid round. I'll use one of those quality mid round picks, maybe two if they if they're really feeling like they like two guys there, right? And give an opportunity for guys like Tyree Phillips and others to compete and to improve the depth there in case something does happen. But I don't think they feel the pressure of getting a guy right away that can start round, you know, week one. They need a home run. I don't think that the sky is falling when it comes to offensive tackle. Like I think a lot of people, like a lot of people think. Um, so I, I don't, I don't see a round one uh, offensive tackle going off the board for the Baltimore Ravens. What about you? Yeah, I agree with you. I think they they want to find a guy in the middle of the rounds that they love, that they feel like has high upside that's just untapped potential at this point, and that maybe it's season in the middle of the season, if if Ronnie's forced to miss maybe a game or two and not necessarily a season ender, that they could turn to a guy who could go in there and and be serviceable in until Ronnie's back out there and ready to take his spot again. Um, but yeah, first round pick. Not when you got all that money invested already at in Ronnie Stanley. Now, if they decide to go after a right tackle, man, it'd be it, I tell you, it'd be hard for me to really be upset about it when you when you don't have Juwan James pass this year and and but still you did just invest like my whole thing is this if you if you if you invest a first round pick in a right tackle, that means you're you want him to play this season and certainly for the next four years after this season. So what does that mean for Patrick McCarry? Are you fine with having Patrick McCarry on the bench uh, with his, let's see, his uh, his cap number being three million next year, six million? Like, is that is that an okay? I mean, it's not a crazy cap number. Is that a right. good enough number to where you feel good about him being your fifth guy? I mean, your sixth guy. Oh, that's a really tough one. Or do you have to start him now? I don't think you have to start him. I think he's look statistically speaking, like you said, he's gonna get in there in plenty of games. Center, right tackle, left tackle, you know what I mean? He's gonna get in there somewhere. So I don't think you have to. You just gotta tell Pat, you know, it's it's uh it's feast and famine type scenario. So there'll be moments where he's and he he knows that there'll be moments where he's gotta wait his turn. There'll be other moments where Pat, we need you to play like a starter, right? Like today at left guard and tomorrow at right tackle, right? Like mm -hmm. That's what it's going to be. But yeah, I mean, I think you, you've got to do that um, in, in order to keep a quality line and and uh, and have the best five out there. There might be days where Pat is the sixth. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, if that is the case, if the season starts and McCarry's your sixth, you got a hell of an offensive line. I know. I know. Uh, and I think we excited. can get there. I don't think that we are. Sorry. Let me, let me just, um, I know we're yeah. talking about tackles. I don't want to go too far into it, but 
I think we'll talk that about why we're only talking whole. tackles. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I think, look, if you look at the other pieces, you're, you we're close. I think Ben Cleveland can develop into something and look, if he doesn't, then you got Patrick McCary, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you plug him in. Or Tyree I think, Phillips. Yeah. I, right. I think, and, and Tyree Phillips has shown he's a much better guard in the NFL than he is a tackle. Yeah. Um, and then Bradley Bozeman, I think is our number one priority as far as off season retention. Mm-hmm. And I think they get a deal done at center. And then, and then right. Of course we talked, you know, we've talked about Kevin Zeitler and he is an absolute rock at right, at right guard. So I think our offensive line has, has pieces. I mean, has the, the potential, excuse me, to, if they have the right pieces in place to be a really dang good offensive line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't hurt that you're getting back your two stud uh, running backs that Ooh. of course will make an offensive line look a lot better uh, along with Lamar Jackson coming back next year. So yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic. I also understand that with the injury risks and and the injury past of those guys, especially at the tackle position, you have to continue to try and build depth because if this offensive – one thing we learned from this season, if the offensive line doesn't play well, then the offense is going to struggle. Uh, so, you know, no matter what you got to do to build quality depth, you know, I'm open for everything. I'm open for them addressing that in the free agency, in the, in the draft, all that because – it's it's starting to look like it, you can have lesser talent in in a lot of areas, but the one spot you can't have a you know a poor room at is the offensive line because in 2019, I mean you look at the the receiving room, you look at the I mean you look you go around the rooms of, of the offense, there wasn't a lot of A pluses from a talent standpoint, uh, but they all looked like A pluses at the end of the season when they had the number one scoring because they had such a dominant offensive line that remained healthy in 2019. Yep. Wasn't the case this year, and it, it reflected, even though I think everyone agrees that this year our wide receiver room was probably more talented than it's been, maybe even in the history of this team, but certainly more talented, not even close. It's way more talented than it was in 2019 when we led the league in scoring. So it just shows the importance of that offensive line. It's where uh, you so, got to start. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's Lamar absolutely- Jackson's confidence level has to be higher in his line. Absolutely. It's where you got to start. And and like we both kind of said, I, I'm not as doom gloom about the tackles. I think between the three guys that you named, Jawan James, Ronnie Stanley, and and, and Pat McCary, mm-hmm. those are three good tackles. And obviously Villanova, I think, is on the outs, but those three in of itself is a decent rotation. Even depend, you know, even if one of the two goes down, I think you still have a good, a good setup there. Uh, so let us know what you guys think about the tackle mm-hmm. position. Uh, who's out there in the free agency market that you would like, if there's someone that we missed. Uh, or in the draft, give us some ideas because we're going to start breaking down film and getting to that here soon. It is coming quick. So mm-hmm. let us know what your guys' thoughts are, and we'll talk to you soon.